story that Phil tells is kind of the inspiration for why a lot of us are in this field. And because we all know that, and it's actually, I think it's now a bureau with slogan that epilepsy is more than just seizures. Um, it goes, it affects a lot of people's lives in very many ways beyond just the, the, the occasional seizure that someone have, or in some cases, the way too many seizures that people have. Um, a little bit about the league. First of all, there, there are two other members from the league back here. Nico Moshe from New York, who was the, the past president of the league, and Gary Maitham, who's one of the editors for our journal. And we're going to want you to write your epilepsy stories because we want to get those out. And our journal, Epilepsy, it does publish them. It makes a big difference. The League started in 1909. It was the, one of the first, earliest subspecialty organizations for, for neurology. And it started in Budapest, in, in, in Hungary. And it was there because people realized that epilepsy really needed some special attention and special emphasis um, because it was a very different kind of disease than most people knew how to deal with. At that time, the tendency was if someone had epilepsy, they would often get institutionalized. And certainly families went way out of their way to try to hide the fact that anybody in the family had epilepsy because it had all kinds of connotations that were untrue, but that was what, just what the body politic believed at the time. Um, since then, there have been a lot of medicines that have come out, but still uh, there's a lot of problem, a lot of issues that are faced by people with epilepsy, and because their seizures aren't still controlled, we have a long way to go. Um, but along those lines, that, that, uh, that there's still the other aspects of epilepsy too. Um, the effect, the families, and ability to work, ability to have a normal social life, all of these factors are, 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 are huge for people. And it's even worse than in a lot of the other countries around the world where there are no resources for epilepsy whatsoever, and you will still see people chained to trees because they have seizures. Um, and it's, there's a lot of mythology that goes along with it. The, the League and the, this, this idea of the working together, the League has its focus, and what our focus is largely on the professionals. We want more people to know how to treat epilepsy. We want them to develop new treatments for epilepsy. And, and the, the Bureau is really for improving the quality of life, whether it's through treatment or some of the social services that they need to have as well. And we really have learned to play off of one another. The, the Bureau was founded in 1961, sort of with some collaboration with the League, and we've really been kind of bonded at the hip ever since, because we bring two very different aspects to the, to the epilepsy treatment. Um, the, and I think one of the biggest and most fruitful aspects that we've had together is especially in the last 10 or 20 years, as you will see, there have been some very, large, very successful collaborative international programs. The first one came out in the late 90s called the Global Campaign. And this was truly an interaction between the League, the Bureau, and the World Health Organization in which they could go forward to some countries where there really was no epilepsy treatment. People were hiding their epilepsies. And as, they've been, as the slogan was, bring it out of the shadows. And I think that's one of the things that we need to do because epilepsy, for a lot of people have it, they want their disease to be invisible. And because people work hard to make it invisible, other people pretend that it just doesn't exist. And it's not seen by the people, by the people who pay the bills, by the governments in terms of their their policies about epilepsy and what kind of services may be available to them. So that very term, out of the shadows, was extremely important because I think it's helped energize a lot of people to to go forward and actually start taking things into their hands. After that, um, there was the Pan American Health Organization Agreement in which the governments in, this, in our hemisphere agreed that epilepsy needed to be a larger health care priority than it is. We're still just beginning. It's only four years old now. It's just beginning to take off. But especially in a lot of the Latin American countries, the epilepsy has gotten a bigger priority than it had in the past. And people are now making use of some effort to have medicines at least available. Because in a lot of countries, they just weren't available uh, at all. Um, similar, the Institute of Medicine report, I think, was very important. Again, a collaboration between the Bureau and the, the League. And for this came for the US. And we emphasized, and one of the important things was that the patients came forward, and this is very important, and they came forward and they said, again, it's more than just seizures. We have a variety of issues that we have to deal with, and our lives are being consumed by this disease. And it's just because the services are either not available or they're difficult to get to or difficult to coordinate. And that's sort of that, the, the, the report, which you can get online, is something which is a really an important um, roadmap for, for helping move forward and what we should be focusing on. 
And we need you to sort of emphasize that because the reality is, is if physicians go forward trying to emphasize this, people tend not to listen to us for a variety of reasons. And I can't say that they're all bad. But if you go forward and say, this is something that we need, it's more likely to happen. People are more likely to listen. And the importance of going forward, I'll, 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 I'll sort of ask you a question. How many of you have ever heard of Hanukkah DeBoer? Good, so I'll tell you a little story. Hanukkah DeBoer, I worked with her briefly in, in the Netherlands. Um, she, was, she started off as a social worker at, at one of the epilepsy institutions in the Netherlands. That's a social worker. Um, but she emphasized the quality of life issues. She helped people get employed. Um, she worked with, with potential employers as well as people sort of pushing them both because both needed encouragement and it actually helped get a lot of people out of their houses and into the mainstream and, and employed. Um, the reason that a lot of these things happened, the global campaign and the work with the WHO, all came about because of Hanukkah, because of her emphasis on the need to, the stigma, to, to remove the stigma for epilepsy and remove the, and it opened doors for people with epilepsy. She just died a couple of months ago, um, but she was an amazing force. And again, this was just a person who was a social worker, but she played on the world stage and she was make, made differences in China, in Republic of Georgia, and a number of other countries. And in, in Africa, they remember her very fondly because of what she did to help move them along. So that what this is, emphasizes is, is the power of dedication, the power of belief, and her ability to persuade can make a lot of difference. And she wasn't a physician, obviously. No one would have ever expected her to have done anything like she did, but she did because she believed in it. And this is where we kind of all depend on you and, and many of our colleagues to help move this agenda forward because you're going to have the strongest voice and the most effective voice. So we work together, but both of us really depend on, on what the, 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 the patients and the patient organizations do to really move this agenda forward. Thank you.